We're keeping our eye on the market as stocks have faded. Right now we're about neutral. So let's look ahead for a second. Let's get ready for next week, checking out some of the big tech companies. We've got Renita Young and Rick Ducat here on the charts. Let's start with Broadcom. As uh, stocks have faded down, Broadcom's now red, mm -hmm. but it's been such a success story in the semiconductor group that if there's a stock maybe next week that can help this market out, Maybe Broadcom. And that's because analysts are still bullish to somewhat bullish on this stock. Even one at Susquehanna raising the price target as high as $1,010. But when earnings come out, they expect the revenue to be $8.86 billion. And we're looking for earnings per share of $10.42. All right. Stock right now trading still below uh, 900 bucks. So mm -hmm. that's certainly a pretty bullish uh, report going into the earnings. We had such an enormous rally on the last one, Rick, that it does kind of make me worried a little bit that we're in a similar situation as all the other chips that didn't get that second wind this quarter. Yeah, things really started to change, I think, around when NVIDIA had their earnings here. You can see this white uh, vertical line there signifying where things really started to take off. We're up about 27% from that point, and you could Take your pick maybe of two different trend lines to draw. You could do one off the old lows here, this blue dashed line, or up here where we started to form this channel and extrapolated across the highs to form this more mildly sloping upward channel here. Uh, big rejection yesterday. We fell below our yellow 21 day EMA after looking like we were going to close significantly above it and actually even closer to those old highs near 920. So 21 day EMA is the point to beat today, 920 to the upside. To the downside, we've got a confluence here. We've got our 63 day EMA and our two trend lines coming in around 830. I like the way the volume uh, uh, profile shows why gaps often are areas of volatility because there's just nothing, you know, in between there. It moves so quickly to the upside. Bulls better hope the stock doesn't uh, do what we just saw for some of the others, like Marvell this morning fading after earnings. Salesforce is out next week, too. And as far as cloud companies go, the good report from Workday, I think, is a nice preview for what could be a good report from Salesforce. It is, but at least one analyst says that there's some mixed business sentiment where the company is expected to perform well, but there's a low bar for Salesforce to be able to beat. However, this analyst feels like the company will be able to beat that low bar. We're talking mm. about Oppenheimer. Analysts do expect adjusted earnings to be $1.90 a share on revenue of $8.52 billion. Okay, so mixed kind of assessment, the stock has been somewhat sideways for basically the last three months. So maybe that tone from the analyst is appropriate here, Rick? Yeah, we did have a bit of an upside excursion there, but I agree with you. It's looked more sideways. And you can see we formed a very large volume node near 210, rivaled only by our point of control here. That's the area of heaviest trading. But you can see overall, it looks like we're weakening a little bit here. We're down about 13% uh, off these highs we formed near 238. Our faster moving average, our 21-day EMA in yellow, is starting to overtake our slower one, the 63-day EMA, not necessarily the greatest trading signal, but worth noting as a sign of the overall trend change. Moving averages sloping downward, this uh, long-term 252, basically flat, mo very modestly up here. So 200 to the downside was these old highs right about there and a bottoming point there. So that's a point to watch. And then 217 to the upside started the gap and some highs there. All right. So well supported <clears throat> at 200 bucks up for Salesforce, you would think. Get all this yeah. trading back here. Yeah, we definitely had some highs. We topped out there multiple times. That's the kind of thing you want to try to look for, especially notable because that's also about where we bottomed out right here, too. So uh, this kind of sticky price level can be worth watching. All right. Not the worst. Um, generally, mostly stocks are still pretty well bid. The charts at this point aren't super concerning. CrowdStrike, the last one, uh, has a pretty volatile history of earnings. And there's been a little disappointment on the stability of the cybersecurity demand, even though this is like one of the most hyped up avenues of growth for tech companies. We've seen some disappointments for these stocks. For sure. It's been a mixed view for cybersecurity the entire year. But at least this stock has more bullish ratings on it coming and more bullish stances really staying the same. So a couple of analysts recently just reiterated their price targets. But when earnings come out, we're looking for an adjustment earnings to be 56 cents a share on revenue of 725.55 million dollars for CrowdStrike. 
They beat last time, as uh, we see on the screen there, but uh, the stock didn't really go anywhere. Um, sideways, too, but with less of a big lift off in the first couple quarters. We're still below the 52-week highs on this. Yeah, we're up about 58% from those yearly lows. But the past few months, like you've said, have been more sideways here, kind of just trending, uh, you know, without a strong directional bias upward or downward, kind of centered around this volume profile point of control near about 150 or so. Our moving averages all clustering together and trending sideways, exhibiting that there's really not much of a, a directional bias in this uh, stock right now here. RSI not really helping us much uh, either, kind of just bouncing around the midline here. So moving averages, those are the marks to beat to the upside. Anywhere from between about 146.87 to about 150 or so. That would also include our volume profile point of control. If we were to make our way up, 165 is about where we topped out a couple times there. To the downside, look for the trend line and also look for the 138 level, start of the gap here, and a point where we topped out several times there. Yeah, it seems like a very well-defined uh, range of possibilities here for CrowdStrike, given how tight the range has been so far. Kind of thinking about those recent uh, levels as well established at this point. We're kind of right in the middle of that range. Yeah, uh, and it's, it's uh, you know, we're seeing when you have moving averages compressing into each other, it speaks to the lack of trend. You can see that very Damn. obviously here. Yeah. Um, and you know, our, our purple 252 day EMA has been sideways ever since uh, April or so. So that uh, speaks to the long term outlook is, is not really giving us a clear lean one way or the other. Pretty big red candle from yesterday in the market fade too, just uh, right there at that 150 for CrowdStrike going into earnings. All right, well, all those are next week. So uh, we will hope for, if you're bullish, uh, a little bit of reprieve from some of those tech numbers. Thanks, Renita and Rick, for the preview on the charts.